Okay. Hi, I'm Deepak, and I'll be talking about the BioLink model as a way of standardizing knowledge graphs and making them interoperable. I'm sure everyone here knows what a knowledge graph is. Uh, at its simplest, it's a graph that uh, represents knowledge or facts, where uh, nodes represent entities and edges represent the relationship between these entities. And the phrase knowledge graph just collectively refers to um, uh, graph-oriented representations like property graphs and RDF triple stores. And um, there are plenty of advantages to using knowledge graphs for your research, but then there are also some challenges. Uh, and these challenges generally come up when you try to work with two or more knowledge graphs uh, or try to integrate uh, multiple uh, sources together. And um, because, you know, in most cases, KGs are created for a specific uh, particular task, and it can be quite difficult to use them in a context for which they weren't originally designed for. And these, and these issues lead to, and this is mostly incompatibility issues between uh, uh, knowledge graphs, and they are generally because you know they might be using different formalism to represent nodes and edges, or the vocabulary used to represent uh, nodes and edges might be different, and this difference can be either syntactic or semantic. And um, KGs typically lack schema. Uh, this makes it very flexible to represent uh, knowledge, but at the same time, uh, this makes it difficult for someone else to understand how the knowledge is being represented in a graph. And uh, even, for example, the choice of identifiers used uh, may be different. Uh, one graph might be using uh, a different na identifier namespace to represent genes, yet another might be using an entirely different uh, namespace. And uh, at the end of the day, these uh, knowledge graphs are a graph representation of various resources, and uh, there are certain biases or uh, certain uh, design decisions made or modeling decisions made when transforming these different sources onto your, uh, onto your knowledge graph. And uh, they, they can, and different KGs might be, might, or different groups might decide different ways to do this. Uh, and these challenges make integration, integration of KGs uh, a bit complicated, and uh, which is why we need uh, standardization on how, on how to represent this information. Uh, and so we developed the BioLink model with that goal in mind. Um, at its core, it's, uh, it contains consists of two branches. One is the entity types, uh, and the other is the association types. The entity types represent uh, no, uh, are basically nodes that are, uh, which represent entities found in biological and biomedical knowledge, like gene, protein, disease, phenotypic feature, and they're all arranged in a hierarchy within the model. Uh, and each entity type has its own unique stable URI, mapping to other ontologies like SIO and sequence ontology, uh, and a list of valid, valid ID prefixes that can be used to represent these nodes in a graph. And these entities are basically higher level terms that can be used to categorize uh, nodes in a graph. Uh, for more specific uh, typing, you can use uh, terms from, a, from an ontology. And the other branch is the association types, which basically, an association links to nodes in a graph, and uh, uh, BioLink model provides a hierarchy of uh, associations, uh, with the root of all associations being the association class. Uh, and some examples are gene-to-gene -gene associations or gene-to-disease associations. Uh, and and it connects a sub an association connects a subject node and object node via a relation property, and there are also in, it can also have additional properties like provided by evidence and publication that tracks provenance of that association. And certain association can have additional properties that are unique to them. For example, a disease to phenotypic feature association can have uh, a frequency qualifier property, uh, which is specific uh, and which explains what the frequency of the phenotype is uh, for a population of that disease. And uh, the, the BioLink so the, the model is defined in a YAML file, which is considered to be the source of truth. And this uh, YAML file is then compiled, uh, or is yes, compiled by uh, the BioLink ML package, uh, which is a meta-modeling framework, which parses the YAML to generate documentation, Python data classes, JSON schema, uh, RDF all, and shape, shape expressions. And just to compare to existing projects out there, uh, when comparing to bioschemas, bioschemas is aimed at uh, improving findability of data in life sciences, uh, and the goal is to, uh, to improve indexing of data sets in a standard way that uh, facilitates search. Um, whereas BioLink model is, trying, is more of a data model for representing knowledge, uh, or representing biological knowledge. And when comparing to another project called Intermine, uh, Intermine is, uh, has a core model that is backed by sequence ontology, but um, it, it, but basically, we're comparing a relational data model versus uh, a graph data model. And comparing to OBO, OBO is a collection of ontologies, whereas BioLink model is a data model. But we do have mapping to other uh, uh, ontologies in OBO. 
And just to compare Piling Model to OboCore, OboCore is a fairly recent project, and it is an upper level ontology that brings together uh, terms from uh, a wide range of ontologies in Obo. And um, both Piling Model and OboCore uh, development uh, are closely coordinated, and we have mappings between the two. Um, and this is just, uh, you can find the documentation on GitHub pages, uh, and we uh, and we would encourage um, feedback and contributions as issues and pull requests. And the idea here, uh, at least my goal here at the Hackathon, is to see how the BioLink model can be extended further for other use cases. One thing I noticed of interest was MIT to RDF, and we can probably see how that uh, can be uh, incorporated into the BioLink model. Uh, and I would like to thank the NCATS Biomedical Data Translator Consortium, the Monarch Initiative, and uh, the organizers of the Biohackathon for having me here. Thank you.